I'm very good. Yourself? Good, thank you. You're uh, a little bit busy. Yeah, we're doing, there's lots of activity. Yeah, fantastic. So thank you for taking the time. I certainly appreciate it. Um, are you good to speak right now? Sure. Okay, well, I guess the basis why I wanted to connect with you, because we've spoken with basically all the other carriers, especially who are involved with this, and uh, I know that TELUS is a, a key player within the upcoming CRTC hearings happening in Quebec over the next couple of days. So I'm just curious if you can just give a background about why these are happening from a TELUS standpoint and also what you hope to uh, achieve from really digging in deeper to the uh, globalized foreign ownership issue. Sure. I mean, these reviews are, uh, these reviews happen every time um, a carrier uh, seeks to operate in Canada. It's a requirement of the law and the Telecom Act that any uh, telecom carrier be owned and controlled and that they operate as a Canadian-controlled corporation. Okay. Um, so it comes as no surprise that there is a review. Um, what came became apparent in um, April of this year uh, were statements by the Forestcom that um, they they had uh, purchased licenses in the in the Spectrum auction, and um, they disclosed what their strategy is uh, across the world for their properties, which is to uh, exercise management control of those those operations and and day to day control. Um, those words out of Forcecom um, gave one pause because, of course, the the, the the Canadian law requires that that uh, as I said, telecom operators be controlled. In fact, it didn't appear to us, given what Forcecom itself was saying, that they were controlled. In fact, or the globalized was controlled. In fact, by Canadians. So we we asked the CRTC to uh, initiate an open and transparent process and um, and, and that's, that's, what, that's what has got us to this point. Um, the reason that, that, that we did it, of course, is because um, the capital structure that is permitted um, by a company is, is uh, singularly important um, on some very, very fundamental metrics cost of capital, uh, the, the cost of debt, um, things that, that, that a Canadian company has defined under the Act uh, can do are different and, uh, than what um, somebody in another regime can do. So we just right. uh, are interested to understand what, in fact, the, the, the rules are and that every our sole um, interest here is to ensure that um, everybody is playing by the same rules. This is this is a, a question. The question that will be answered in the hearing over the next couple of days is is when the commission issues a decision is what are the rules of the road in terms of corporate uh, equity debt overall capital structure uh, of of companies and what what does it mean to be Canadian controlled? Our view is um, that. You know, a company that uh, where 65 percent of the equity uh, is owned by a non-Canadian, and almost 100 percent of the debt is owned by uh, a non-Canadian, and where um, the brand of the company is owned by a non-Canadian, and where uh, there are technical services agreements in place. Um, by a non-Canadian, that those are in, in India of of uh, a company that is not controlled, in fact, by Canadian. Didn't, I've it, never seen anything like this. Really? Uh, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've never seen uh, 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 something like this. Something of this magnitude, where there's so many, or it's one big player coming from overseas, or just how the structure is org organized? Well, whether it's from overseas or from the United States or anywhere. Um, if, if you own, if, if, if a foreign entity owns 82% um, of the capital of a company, it's pretty hard, on that alone, it's pretty hard to say that that company is not controlled by a non-Canadian. Mm -hmm. But in this case, not only is that the case, that 82% of, of the capital of Globalize is controlled by by a non-Canadian, uh, but it's a not, you know, there, as I said, there's these other elements to this, um, the fact that, 
majority, uh, uh, the, the, the supposed controlling Canadian majority voting equity holder has to sell. These are all, to me and to us, our position is, and that's why we're, you know, this is the kind of thing we're going to talk about in the hearing, um, you know, doesn't that, doesn't that all sort of point to control and, and um, that, that these are, these are rather unprecedented, the way this deal is structured is quite unprecedented. Didn't uh, Industry Canada already give Global Live the go-ahead? For my, my understanding is that Industry Canada gave them an authorization letter under the uh, yes under the uh, Radio Com Act. So what was the, so how come it's a, a bigger issue now that they actually the government actually gave them a go ahead, but now as to what Global Live said in a in a press release that they're blaming Tells for game game playing stalling, and wanting them to um, possibly stall the launch. Is that something um, that? As Global Live is aware, um, when you get a, a radio authorization from Industry Canada, you are told, uh, probably right on that letter of authorization, that you uh, still have to pass a CRTC review under the Section 16 of the Telecom Act. It says that right on the letter of authorization. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they knew that they were going to have to pass uh, um, a review by the CRTC. Um, in terms of, so, so I don't think that should come as a surprise to anyone. Um, nobody knows what Industry Canada looked at in its review because it is in public. Um, the CRTC review uh, of this is public, and, and we've had an opportunity to see um, all of the touch points of control in Globalize that are held by Oriscom. Um, in terms of an allegation from Global Live that we are trying to delay them, um, I, I can tell you that I am aware of no um, complaint, no arbitration for, for, for rights uh, to tell us roaming or anything else from Global Live. We have taken the position publicly since April that, that this review uh, need not and should not delay um, Globalize in any way, and my understanding is from Globalize public statements that they're intending to launch in the marketplace later this year or early in the new year, so I, 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 I find it um, sort of ludicrous that someone would suggest we're trying to delay them. This is the law. The law says that you have to, um, A, have this review, pass it, and that in passing it, you must demonstrate that you are Canadian controlled. Mm -hmm. Tell us how this, Rogers has to do it, Bell has to do it, every carrier in Canada has to do it, and we do it regularly and in public ways. TELUS is undergoing uh, a license review for broadcasting licenses right now where its ownership structure will be reviewed. We last underwent a broadcasting review in 2007. I mean, this is well known to people who, who operate in, in, in Canada. These are the rules. The mm -hmm. law. Well, it seems like uh, everyone is certainly watching this over the next couple of days because it's it's really an, an, an important matter. Industry Canada came out and said that they want to bring in some new competition, so it certainly has uh, consumers and businesses watching. So um, over the next couple of days, we'll certainly uh, follow it. And the end end result. What is the end result that Telus wants? Well, I mean, what what we want is to make sure, as I said at the outset that everybody's playing by the same rules. Right. Um, and and once we understand, you know, at the end of this hearing, I expect we are going to understand um, with some clarity what the rules are and whether Globalize, Globalize, Globalize uh, uh, meets them. And, you know, if Globalize meets them, then TELUS has always had to take in the position that, you know, uh, we're prepared to compete with anybody as long as we're all competing on the same playing field. And if 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 uh, if Globalize passes the same scrutiny that we do, then um, then we're off to the races. Okay. Well, over the next few days, we'll certainly be watching. I certainly thank you for your time right now, especially because you're probably uh, knee knee deep and getting everything ready. <laughs> so certainly appreciate your time. No problem, Ted. Ian. Have yourself a great day, and we'll speak soon.